So you go for the network standalone player before you do the ripping on your computer. In the introduction video I explained that a network standalone ripper player is like a CD player with built in hard disk and network connection. The network standalone player lacks ripper in, the, in its name meaning that ripping, the copying of the audio data from CD to the hard disk is left out. So essentially it's a CD player of which the CD mechanism is replaced with a hard disk. The network functionality is added, added so you can copy music over the network to the player and use a smartphone or tablet for remote control. Like with the ripping version, the network standalone player comes in all kinds of shapes and forms and sometimes the owner itself has to add the hard disk. Some players have a display and have to be controlled by infrared remote. Others have a touchscreen while there are also players without any display that have to be controlled by smartphone or tablet. Often navigation using both a smartphone or tablet and the screen in the player will work. In general apps are available for both iOS and Android tablets and smartphones. Let's analyze the name I gave to this kind of device. It has a network interface and or Wi-Fi card for connecting to the smartphone or tablet and for connecting to the web for the metadata. Since it has a network connection it usually is also able to play music from shared volumes in the network like a shared directory on a computer or NAS or from a DNLA or UPnP AV server. The player doesn't depend on a computer, NAS or other external device for playing music since it stores the music on the internal hard disk. In most cases it can even be operated without a smartphone or tablet, although that does make use a lot easier. It plays music from the internal hard disk and often from shared volumes in the network. Since this device is not able to rip music, that is copy CD content to the hard disk, that has to be done on a separate device, usually a computer. I will do a separate video on ripping and on adding met metadata, but I must mention here that not all CDs are always ripped and labeled correctly. There can be several reasons why a CD isn't ripped properly, like scratches, dirt or just a bad pressing. Even when the ripping went perfect, the metadata might not be found or be correct. Sometimes the ripping software on your computer will prompt you to choose from a number of alternatives. Sometimes it will automatically add wrong metadata or just add no metadata at all. Then you'll end up with an entry called unrecognized title that holds track 1, track 2 and so on. You can correct it by using a special naming programs on the computer as for instance rename for Windows, Music Brains Picard for Windows and Mac or Yate for Mac. A lot has been said about the quality of equipment that works with computer technology. Music from the hard disk could never sound as good as a CD. Therefore, I repeat again, chances that a hard disk reads the audio bits far more accurate are extremely high. It is more about the noisy electronics inside normal computers. But that's a matter of having the right design goals. As I have mentioned before, a CD player is a computer too, as is the washing machine, the TV and the car. It's not the computer components that might make a player sound bad, it's the technical design. It might be clear that the technical design depends on the budget available. Therefore, a well-designed player costing 2500 euros will sound better than a well-designed player costing 1000 euros. And as always, a badly designed 2500 euros player might sound worse than a 1000 euro player. In general, the network standalone player costs less than a network standalone player ripper. 
This is only logical since it doesn't need a CD drive and ripping software integrated, since they are part of the computer. Since a networking stand-alone player has to be placed close to the stereo, it needs to be quiet and therefore contain a silent hard disk and no or extremely silent blowers. If you are held back by the idea of ripping large quantities of CDs, it's good to know there are companies that offer that service. The going price is about 1 euro per disc, somewhat lower for larger orders and well negotiable for really big orders. Often you have to take all CDs out of their jewel cases or sleeves and put them on a spindle since the company loads them into a fully automatic ripping machine. Make sure you specify full CD quality as output format, FLAC, ALEC or AIF. WAF is also full CD quality but has limited metadata capabilities and is therefore the lesser choice. All four formats con contain exactly the same audio data and should not sound different from each other. If there is a difference in sound, it's because your equipment, i.e. the player, works better with some formats and worse with others. This is not likely to occur in these days, but has been an item with some British players a number, a number of years ago. Recently, internet streaming services started offering full CD quality streaming. Big names here are Tidal and Cobus, and both even announced streaming at higher quality using MQA technology. For CD quality, any player that supports Tidal or Cobus will do. To use the high res music, you will need an MQA compatible player. Now you don't need to rip your CDs, which might save you a lot of money when you have it done by others. But you also don't need a hard disk, the standalone part, and you'll be better off with just a network player. If you consider this, you might go back to the menu and choose the network player. You find the link in the top right corner. If you love music and like the convenience of choosing your music from your armchair and have no shared volume or NAS or computer in your network, go for the network standalone player. Buy it at a service oriented dealer or have your ne handy nephew install it. If you also have your music ripped by someone else, the dealer recommends, or by your nephew, you'll end up with a player that offers a lot of convenience and, depending on the player of choice, good to excellent audio quality. You'll enter a new universe where you will rediscover albums you have owned for years but haven't played for a long time, or even forgot you had it. But if you're not handy with computers, make sure your dealer is, or your nephew. That will be difficult on the low end of the market, but when you spend thousands of euros, you might, no, you must demand service. Developments go quick, like the new MQA format. So, if you want to remain informed, subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page, or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there. You'll find the information below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.